there are many ships involved throughout the Bible of the Lord's Navy. And we talk about Christian soldiers. And yet, very much forgotten is the Navy. There is more water, oceans, and lakes, and rivers than there is land on this planet Earth. And today, hopefully we're going to look at two ships. And the first one today is workmanship. Workmanship. Seven times in the Bible in seven verses. And the first place is Exodus 31, verse 3. This is God speaking to Moses. I have filled him with the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, in wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. There's your three aspects. Wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. You get to of the three, lacking one, and your life is not going to be complete in God. Knowledge is what you know. The world knows a lot of things. The world knows how to launch nuclear missiles. The world knows how to torture people. But the world does not know God. The world does not know of salvation in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Wisdom is how to apply what you know. You can know how to start a car. Wisdom would be to sit down in the driver's seat, shift it in gear, grab hold of the steering wheel, press the gas, and go. You can have knowledge on how to drive an automobile, but if you don't apply wisdom, you're not going nowhere. At least as a driver. And there are people out there who I know God, I know God, I know God, I know God. And they don't do anything with God. Understanding is your relationship with God. How can you take your knowledge, your wisdom, and use it for God? You know, I said you can get in a car and know how to drive, and you put it in gear and you go down the road. Understanding would be to go pick somebody up and bring them to church. Understand would be if the pastor does no vehicle, pick him up, bring him to church. It's what you know. How do you apply what you know? And then you put it to God. Many people in the world have wisdom and knowledge. They don't apply it to God. They get a paper diploma. That's going to do nothing. I have filled him with the Spirit of God. There's the Holy Spirit. That's what the world lacks. The Gospel of John. They don't have the Spirit. In wisdom and understanding knowledge. So the Holy Spirit is the one that has the wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. In all manner of workmanship. So that comes from God. To rise cunning, to be made known how to do a finished work, to work in gold and silver and brass, in cutting of stones, a jeweler, to set them, the cutting of timber, to work in all manner of workmanship. 
And what it is here is they're going to build a temple. The tabernacle, excuse me. They're going to build the, the Ark of the Covenant, the brazen altar, and all the furniture. And you must understand whether you're saved or you're lost, what you know, how you apply what you know, wisdom. And you may not have no understanding of God. And you may have understanding of tip books, blueprints, Unless you have the Holy Spirit, it is vain. And the very thing is, if you do not give God the honor for your talents, save the law, whatever you can do, and you don't take what you do, talents, remember that, that's in the Gospels, and you bury that in the dirt, in the earth, Save the loss. You anger God. Don't you dare ever say, well, there's nothing I can do for God. You got prayer. Everybody has the ability to pray. Everybody has the ability to pass out a gospel track or leave a gospel track. The workmanship that God gives us the ability to do. I used to build nuclear submarines. I can't tell you my, my job classification, but you know there, there was many works that when the job was complete, I would sit back and look at it. God gave me that ability. I am 56 years old right now, and I'm sitting here talking to you. I practically lost all those abilities I can I can't drive today. I have neuropathy. I can't feel my feet. I can't feel the hospitals. I'm losing sensation and ability to use my right hand. I can't write anything. At all. <laughs> you better give God the credit. Because graveyards are full of people who can't go back. And do something. There are Christians in nursing homes. Unable to do what they were able to do. I know someone. Who would brag. Well I never miss church. And I was open I am there. And. God gave him multiple strokes. He had to miss church. You don't need to brag on foolishness. You need to thank God for your knowledge, your wisdom, and your understanding. First Chronicles 28, 21. And behold the courses of the priests and Levites. Even they shall be with thee for all the service of the house of God. This is the temple of Solomon. There shall be the for all men of workmanship, every willing skillful man of all manner of service, also the princes and all the people will be worth only at thy commandment. So there are people here who have skills. They've been given abilities, they've been given a trade, they've been given
balance. And they're going to help you solve it. To build that temple. And the question is, you got to ask yourself. At the church that you're at. Okay. What can you do? What talents has God given you? That you can help build the work. Okay, you may not be able to drive a bus. You might not be able to do Sunday school. Can you hold the door open for people who are lame? Can you help people who sit down their seat? Can you get people to bowl to them? Can you make sure they have a seat? Can you sing? Maybe the pastor will use you to, before the service to get up, open the Bible, and read portions of Scripture. Or maybe the very fact is being there. I was in the prison ministry, and I remember one night, you know, I worked on this message, and I got to prison, and there was lockdowns, and there was troubles, and problems, and there was only three men. Well, better three men that we had a good fellowship and a good time together than no men. No preacher, teacher. Wants to get up and look out and see no one. If you are in a church that God brought you into, be something or someone for that church. I don't know what. You gotta talk to your pastor. You gotta talk to the deacons. There's somewhere there for you to do. You can't do everything. I can't go door knocking no more. I can't walk and go door knocking. So it would be foolish for me to sign up for the Saturday door knocking. But there are other things I can do. Ezra. Ezra. Uh, no, wait a minute. Maybe Ezekiel. Ezekiel 28. Ezekiel 28, 13. This is talking about the devil. The devil was a cherub. Now that's a further study would be of interest. Which we're not going to get into today. But this is about Satan. Thou has been in Eden. Genesis 3, the serpent. Then go to Revelation chapter 12, but we won't go there. The garden of Eden, every precious stone was I covering. The sardis, the topaz, the diamond, the barrel, the olive, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, the carbuncle, the gold. The workmanship of that Tyrex, its timbers, of that pipes, musical instruments, was prepared in me in the day that thou was created. The devil was created. And God put a workmanship into this cherub called Lucifer that will become Satan. And the Bible describes him as in beauty. Look at these stones. He was a sparkle. God did that. You know, people say, well, why, why did God make the devil 
He knew it ain't the problem God made the devil. He did. God also had his son suffer and die at Calvary. What are you going to do about it? If such a being as Lucifer will be Satan and we cast off in the lake of fire that burns forever, and God put workmanship into the cherub. Don't you think you should put a little workmanship into his work? The Bible says, go around the world and preach the gospel. There's no one way of doing it. I'm a street preacher. Everybody goes preach in the street. You can hold a sign. You can pass out gospel tracts. You can deal one on one. You can have an open Bible with people. There's many ways you can do it. What ability has God given you? How did He make you? And what purpose did He make you for? And in what talents did He inscribe into you? for his finished work, and for you to, to live and be about. Ephesians. Ephesians 2.10. Ephesians 2.10, for we, we, Christians, are his workmanship. We are his creation. As much as God made Satan, as much as God made the, the, the stars and the sun and the moon and the lions and the giraffes and the fish, he made me. And he made you. You're not a product of nothing. You're not an evolutionary trap. You're not theistic evolution. You are a creation by a creator. We are his workmanship. We read about that finished temple that Solomon built. That finished temple was the workmanship. And it's a thing of beauty. We read about the, uh, the tabernacle that the children of Israel and Moses built and that they traveled in, in the wilderness. That was their workmanship. We are the workmanship of God created in Christ Jesus. All right, so what is our talents? Unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. You know what God wants you to do? He wants you to do good works. To be a workmanship. He doesn't want you to do evil works. He doesn't want you to do bad works. He wants you, your ability, that God has created you. Don't say, oh, I can't do it. You know, my family has always been like this, and you know, I grew up in this. No, no. You are a creation by God, a workmanship, and you are capable of good works. All of us. I know we fail. You trying? Are you trying? Get some effort. Now, the next one. The next thing we're going to look at is stewardship. Stewardship. You'll find a steward on a ship. And he's in charge of one of his, his abilities is to be responsible for the passenger's belongings. Now, 
if I were to go on a ship on the trip and I got a diamond and I, I board the ship and I go up to the steward and I say, here's his diamond. And I, say, I don't want to carry this thing around. I'm going to put this diamond in your hands for your protection. Now he'll give me a slip or something. And he's going to put it in a locker. He's going to put it in the safe, in the ship. And he's going to make sure that that diamond is safe from the times that I put it in his hands to he puts it back in my hands when we reach the port. Now, what kind of steward would that man be if he takes that diamond and he starts tossing it up in the air and catching it, tossing it up in the air and catching it, and a big wave rocks the boat and the diamond falls overboard in the ocean? Now you wouldn't be a very good steward. Let's say you're out of jail. And something's coming up. Or whatever it be. And the men get their paychecks. And you know. They're very well known for blowing their paycheck on gambling. And foolishness and all that. And what they do is they hand you. Let's say $20 every week. The whole for And they say, here's the money. Don't give me that money until this event happens, comes. You have become a steward of your co-workers' pay. You're responsible. If he gives you $120, you've got to give him $120 on the day that he has prescribed no sooner no later. It's your responsibility. We are stewards of the word of God. We are stewards of the gospel. And there are too many Christians, they take the gospel and message to it, and they just throw it over. Well, I'm saved, I'm okay. There are some Christians out there, they take the gospel and they around and turn it into a party. We're going to have fun games and, you know, the water slides and all kinds of junk like that. And, you know, we're going to dunk the pastor. And, uh, uh, friend, we're going to have an angry God when you get to the end. Because all Christians are going to stand before God at the judgment seat of Christ. They're going to say, I gave you the gospel. You were saved by the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. I told you, go around the world and preach the gospel. And you failed. The day of reckoning will be a word that would be used for a steward. A responsibility. Every enlisted man or woman in the military is somehow, some way, a steward to their country. Whether they're taking ammunition and loading into a gun, or they're making hash potatoes, or they're swabbing the decks, or they're churning the boat. Or they're making sure the engine runs. Whatever position, whatever job, whatever vehicle, wherever they are, they have a duty. And the stewardship has a duty. We have a duty to our Savior. And that duty has failed in the Laodicean seeing church. I've had to leave churches. I have been asked to leave churches because they rather have fun than be serious. So Luke chapter 16 verse 2 
Now, stewardship shows up three times in three verses. In verse 1, he said also to his disciples, There's a certain rich man which had a steward, or there he is. And the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. So the charge is to the steward is, he's waste. God does not want us to waste. This country wastes food. And they will be reliable. Christians today waste time and ability. And they will take their time to have full on the entertainment rather than be a soldier. I mean, I wouldn't think that a life of a soldier in Afghanistan would be always to have fun and always to be entertained. Now, they do have entertainment. They do have fun. Uh, you know, when they're out there in the battlefield and they got their gun and, and bullets are flying over hand, head, and, you know, the, that vehicle was just bombed. Waste is good. How about a soldier and they're in a firefight and he's taking his gun and his ammunition and he's trying to shoot an apple off a tree. Target fire. That's waste. He called them. The rich man called the steward. He said, How is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship. For thou mayest be no longer said, Steward, I thought you'll lose your job. You're fired. Just because you're fired, there's still accountability. you got to give an account. We're going to open the books. Listen, the judge will see the credit. Okay, you know, all life is over. But the books are going to be open. And listen, I'm not perfect. There are going to be books where I didn't get somebody a gospel track. I didn't tell them like I was doing But there are plenty of people where I did. I gave an effort. And I failed. But I gave an effort. There are Christians in churches, and there are churches today, they haven't told one more soul. Or they tell about their church. They tell about their pastor. It's not a steward. Your church and your pastor is not what is important. The gospel in Jesus Christ. So you got to give it a count. They are reckoning. Those books are going to be balanced. God is a balancer. You ever read the book of Numbers? God is an accountant. You imagine being an accountant and you skip the numbers and you stand before God with the very account with numbers? Knows exactly what you did and how you did it. Listen, we have a God that knows where Jimmy Hoffa is and what happened to him. Our God knows where Amelia earned her. What happened to her? God knows about what John Barrett Ramsey. And the steward said with himself, What shall I do for my Lord, the boss? Taketh away from me the stewardship. He ain't got no job. I cannot dig. Right? I'm not, I'm not going to go out there and dig in the streets. I'm not going to be a post hole digger. And the bag on the machine, I'm not going to go out there and hold a tin cup and say, you know, 
will work for money. I am resolved what to do that when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. And so this man lost his job, lost his stewardship, and still he had to give an account. Friend, you're not going to get, get away with your sin. You're not going to get away with your crime. You're not going to get, get away with your ignorance. God don't take excuses. You better get off your butt and you better get out there and find out what God's given you and do it. And do it to the best of your ability and you better get out there and preach the gospel. Who cares about your church? Who cares about your pastor? Oh, we're going to have a revival. Your revival is nothing. I've been in many church revivals. Two weeks later, they don't even know who was there preaching. Let's be faithful workmanship. Let's be faithful stewards to our Lord God and Savior.